the sound of it's jazz, snapping it's is actually jazz. your it's, jazz. it's your index it's finger jazz. hitting your palm, not actually the sound of the fingers. I'm here with Michael and Kyle, uh, the men behind the Stranger Things soundtrack, uh, which they are going to be playing tonight to a packed out uh, Barbican Hall. We're a long way from Austin, Texas. Uh, and if you don't mind, can we go back to Austin, Texas briefly to a time when there wasn't a synth shop there? What was your idea of music making before you got your hands on the synths that you're kind of quite famous for using? We grew up listening to a lot of the same music, sharing music. Not really making it, but just learning about consuming it. it kind yeah, of exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, consuming it. And we listen to it. a lot of um, a lot of weird stuff, you know, a lot of uh, warp records and reflex and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Thrill jockey things like that. <clears throat> so we were kind of always interested in the experimental aspect of electronic music. And I mean, honestly, I thought that it all came from computers. So I got, so <laughs> yeah. I got a laptop. I think I legit and I, called it computer music. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Like yeah. A well, teenager. Was, yeah. There's yeah. a question that I would always ask people. And it's the dumbest fucking thing. You'd say, like, what program do you use? Like, that was where the music. That was how from. you talk to a musician. Yeah. What program do you what use? What program do you use? And I was like, so if you're, you know, if your idea of, you know, like you say, computer music basically it looks like people are sending emails. When did you first get your hands on something that had like <laughs> things you could twiddle and, you know, and actually operate in a totally different way? Before we got to that point, we were doing a lot of recording, like field recording, and oh, manipulating right. things like that um, to try to get drum sounds or anything, you know, going out and recording like whatever. Yeah, banging on a train or a big box or an air conditioner or like. Yeah, I had this big tube. corrugated like tunnel that was metal that went under around this college and had this crazy sound. I'd go like pop balloons in there and take a drum kit. Like, yeah, great. Play Some it, music like, concrete simple. almost. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just anything I mean, we could hear. Like we'd go sort of like garages. the techniques of of using a space to record, you know. Yeah. But we weren't yeah. making like. We, we were we were trying to we were, at all. No, we were making. I was. I don't know about you. <laughs> well, but I mean, music concrete is, is very yeah, like yeah, it's, it's, it's very it. abstract. Yeah, this yeah. is more just to get the sound. Yes, yeah, and then we would use that use as it. like the snare or yeah, and yeah, try yeah, to yeah. make music. I mean, we weren't very good at that time, but yeah, we would try to actually make songs out of it. So that's where we kind of started. At some point, I discovered synths. I don't know exactly what it was that clicked for me, but I immediately kind of like started getting into like the modular synth stuff because just kind of thought that with the modular thing, I could get all those pieces and have a bit of everything, like get a mini mode filter, get a proper yeah. five filter, get an ARP filter. And yeah. Uh, that way I would have these like synths. It's like your Frankenstein's monster yeah. you were building. So of, I yeah. kind of got into that first and um, the few synths I bought up until getting into analog stuff they would say the word synthesizer on them, but they were terrible machines. Like I'd pick them up just to like pawn shops and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They weren't really synthesizers. Like you couldn't really edit them. So you couldn't get under the bonnet of the sound. Yeah, so it didn't, didn't really click. But something of that of that work, of that way of working with sound, really obviously stuck with you. Yeah, because it's it's like a, makes it feel more like an expressive instrument. Yeah. You're kind of. It's not until you get into modular synths. And you have to buy every piece that you realize how much is going into it and how fucking expensive it is to yeah. just make a simple sound yeah, yeah. out of a yeah. with a modular and just to do base like the most basic thing that you would think is like a free throwaway effect like vibrato or something. Yeah. Takes like three to four modules just to add a little yeah, yeah. note. So in, in some of the Stranger Things soundtrack, when there's a track or a cue that feels quite explicitly towards the kind of more scary side of things, oh, yeah. it's almost like I hear more of that material in there, the kind of, you know, the real world sounds of metal being clanked. We definitely played some noise shows when we were younger. Yeah. We brought out some yeah. big pieces of metal rusted and metal. Just bang shit around. Yeah. It's yeah, fun. Yeah. But, yeah. So we, there's still some, like... Um, acoustic elements in the show here and there. Yeah. Or at least things sometimes hit air, like at least if it's like a Wesley cabinet or like a yeah. weird like water phones and stuff, you just might not be able to recognize it because we tend to almost manipulate 
our sound sources to the point where they're not recognizable. Yeah. Like there's piano. Yeah, on there's the show piano too. on the show, but I don't yeah. think anybody would notice because it doesn't sound. It's basically yeah, yeah. sounds like ambience or. So it's, it's one it's of those things. We haven't gotten that far away from when we were screwing around as like yeah. teenagers, just yeah, manipulating yeah. anything. Yeah. There's something about the physical way which you manipulate uh, instruments from a certain era, and I know that that's coming back again a lot of the time. But that is very human. It's very. It, it's almost. It, the way filters work, you know, and the way that mm -hmm. real people turning real knobs, it gives it humanity. It's almost a vocal quality that yeah. I think is really strong in 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 that in those kind of synthesizers. I don't know if you kind of agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like I could go in the software and yeah. take some kind of weird expert sleepers device and like draw this like MIDI line that's gonna route out to go to my synth, yeah. so it can go across the room to. Make the filter open all like just this perfect linear I'm already thing, bored. And, or I could just be like, <laughs> "This is why we don't do that." Literally, just, just walk over and go, "Wow, yeah, 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 wow." <laughs> and also, if you're gonna go on stage, you know, as well, it's like but there's an expressiveness to it when yeah. you, it's human, yeah, and yeah. you do actually, you do it different every time. And I might do yeah, three passes yeah. and, and then be like, "Oh, that was perfect." Like that was, yeah, the, yeah. That, we're, that all had, right, we're all about the live takes. We're all about the live takes. Not so, I mean, we do uh, like some editing and the DAW to get things right, some automation. Even with but, the band, though, but typically it's, like, it's we try to get yeah, the performance. Try and keep what that and live even if it's moment. not the best performance, yeah. Some like technically, yeah. There's some sometimes there's a performance that you you just you know it's the best one, even if it has mistakes in it, yeah. and you just keep yeah. it because. Yeah, it's the, obviously the best. Well, it's one. like you, if you can't redo it to the point that it's so much better, it's like okay, that mistake. Okay, the mistake yeah. doesn't matter. Has, doesn't still, matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, because it's a better performance. It's has amazing, a isn't more it? More of a feel. Yeah, it's like we we spend quite a lot of time reintroducing the humanity into technology these days. <laughs> you know, because we've we yeah. find it out yeah, with yeah. so much automation, and then so you have to kind of get back to the the human side of it <clears throat> and kind of put it back in later. I mean, does the band break down into kind of individual responsibilities or is it, is it, does every track have its own kind of method that just grows the track? You know, do you have? We've, we've written music in just about every way that you could possibly write music. We've all gotten together and recorded that way. We've individually written songs and brought them to the group to finish. We've individually written entire songs that then just are basically done, yeah. and then they make it on the album. What happens then when you enter the world of uh, a television show, um, where you know it leaves your your little private world of what you want to do musically and becomes a part of something else? Uh, how did that come about initially for the Stranger Things gig? They used uh, uh, the last song on our first LP called Dirge in their trailer. Like yeah. the sizzle reel is what they call them. It's yeah. Basically, a fake trailer that uses scenes from other movies to kind of convey that the, the mood, the mood of, yeah. of what they're trying to do. And they had one of our songs in that, and that's what they were using to pitch along with the scripts and lookbooks. Yeah. So when it came, when they got the green light and it came time for them to hire composers, they were, they didn't really think about who to use. And they're like, well, why don't we just get, try these yeah. guys that did the song in our trailer? We, Put together a lot of that content that we yeah. had labeled kind of, you know, we knew it never turned into songs. <clears throat> just yeah. had a cinematic feel. Some of it was just drones and moods and textures. Yeah. We just sent that stuff to them. And they're like, oh my God, this is like Christmas in July. Well, it was Fourth right. of July, which is, you know, a holiday yeah. in America. A lot and of that they were stuff. Like, it's like Christmas on the Fourth of July because we sent them like yeah. Yeah, yeah, 40 yeah. tracks so or something. I don't know. They love that stuff. And they're then they're basically like, a lot of that did not, like, mo none of that stuff really got used. but. Then they, you know, just were like, this is great. When they wanted to ask for more and more specific stuff. Okay, like yeah. Stuff that actually referenced the show, like about the characters and different themes and motifs that would happen. We were we were essentially pitching for yeah, about we six pitching. weeks. There was other people that were pitching really? as well. Yeah, okay. uh, we didn't, it wasn't like a sure thing. It was, okay. are you interested? Make some demos. Yeah. Can we you really get, do we it? We need to get approval. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, we know you can do dark and epic, but we need... Yeah. Also, to have sentimental stuff and like light, more lighthearted things. So, did you think? I mean, did you know you could do it? I mean, oh yeah, we, I mean, yeah. we make oh, yeah. all kind of music. Yeah. yeah. Like, 
We're not just like always like. Doo, doo, yeah. doo, 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 doo. <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm so angry <laughs> right now. Yeah. Like, no. but, yeah. We make all kinds of music, but we just don't really have an outlet. We don't really have an outlet for that kind of music. Yeah, yeah. Prior to, to that, to, yeah. to doing scoring, so it was actually it's it was really fun to to be able to release some of that music because yeah. there's a lot of stuff that we still like as music, but would never fit on a survive album. Sure, sure. So to get the opportunity to release some of that stuff was was really nice. Yeah, and yeah. It continues to be nice. Now you often hear, you know, composers complaining that they get brought in very late to something. It sounds to me from what I've read that you were in really quite early on in the show's development. I guess it's so a double edged sword. Really, yeah. So yeah, we did on. all we did way too much work. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's literally this is from the scoring textbook. Yeah. It's like textbook you're gonna write too many cues yeah and you're gonna send over way too many things like and we did all we did everything that it says you're gonna do the first time that's wrong even after reading <laughs> it to warn you but honestly that was probably the best education we could yeah. have had doing too much work so. right the edits changed so much and they changed like three times a day so if you wait there's no point in scoring actually scoring something until you have a locked picture yeah. because you're just going to have to do it again or get but a music editor. The to preliminary do it. like conceptual phase is good to like write a bunch of ideas yeah, and little yeah. melodies and motifs and get a sound palette together and that kind of goes as part of the scoring process. Yeah. And some of that stuff does work or it can be like further embellished upon. Yeah. But that's one of my favorite part like moments of it rather than just like okay, here's a scene, here's a scene. Yeah, here's usually a scene, a scene. usually the more impactful songs like the ones that people respond to yeah, more like on the soundtracks and things were written in that way because we were writing them as pieces of music to listen to. Yeah. versus yeah. pieces like, of music for to... bars and then it yeah. changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not versus, just yeah. Like, versus like this <laughs> stuff that like yeah. You're playing music and then you're just like, Meh, and it just switches at the fucking completely random yeah. time. And you're like, why would anyone want to listen to this? And then you start working in this world and you realize that there's an actual function to that because yeah. the picture is changing and they don't adhere to musical timings. You know, they're. Yeah. It's very fun. It makes you think outside of, I guess, how you typically would write music. Yeah, I was going to say. But it can also inspire it? you to write things you never would write, yeah. like out of the context of film. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, limitation and, and restriction can be great, a great source of, you know, uh, ideas. I mean, you know, yeah. people people love John Carpenter's soundtracks and, and rightly Who's so, that? but he did that because he didn't have any money and that was the best way he could do it. You I know? didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that was Who's the reason Who's John Carpenter? Why. You know, the guy, the director of things like Assault on Precinct Kyle's 30 making a funny... Uh, I'm just fucking with oh, you. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> 